from time to time, people contact me and it varies. Sometimes it's a week or two goes by and nobody contacts me. And then all of a sudden, three or four people will contact me. Interesting how that is. But I received a letter, an actual physical letter. Here it is. Um, in 2020. And it didn't come to my house. It went to Skeptical Inquire, which is where I publish um, my column. And they forwarded it over to me. And it was a handwritten letter with a stamp on it. It was really interesting because, you know, who gets a lot of mail, especially handwritten mail these days. But it, I, I found it really interesting because I opened it up. There, It was anonymous. So it was an anonymous letter. And I'm going to call the person Pat because it's just easier to do that. So Pat had sent me a handwritten letter. And I'm going to tell you the story of what she tells me. Now, I wrote about this. So if you want to read what I'm about to um, tell you or you want to link to it, it is in Skeptical Inquirer. And it is called, <clears throat> What Do I Do With His Damn Book? And the reason why it's called, what do I do with this damn book is because that's what she had written in the return um, box instead of her name. She wrote that. <laughs> I think it was hilarious. So here's the story of uh, what do I do with this damn book? And this is Pat and it happened in 2020 and the medium is Thomas John. So here, here's the story. So I, I believe I received it in 2020. I might've received it in actually 2019 because it just sat on my desk for a while. I didn't really know what to do with it. First thing she says is I applaud your Operation Pizza Roll Thomas John article and I give it a standing ovation. That just makes me laugh when I, when I think of this because she just sounds like somebody I, <laughs> you know, I would admire, you know, just, I'm going to write a fan letter. <laughs> I thought, okay, where is this going? I know that was kind of cute. So here's what she says. She sums it up by saying, and she, she told me I can publish this. I can write about it, anything that will help. I don't, I don't have her name. I don't know who she is. So, you know, it's, it's neither here nor there. She says she had been intrigued by Thomas John's show, Seatbelt Psychic. And so when she saw that Thomas John was going to be giving readings in a town near her, she and her sister purchased VIP tickets, which were $125 each. The general admission tickets were $25 each, and they were sold out. Pat and her sister arrived early, and they waited outside. And they were approached by a very friendly woman who she calls Rita, who had been quietly observing people. The venue was in a church and there were plenty of open seats and there was only maybe 40 people that showed up to the event. Pat and her sister sat in the VIP section right up front and Rita sat right behind them. And when the sister suggested that they move further down the row, Rita explained that she was hoping to get to know them better. So the show starts and Thomas John jumps from one audience member to another. And when he gets a few no responses, he moves to another person. Pat says there, there was this Latino family that desperately tried to get Thomas John's attention. And he went to them briefly and then decided it was Rita's family that actually was trying to come through. And what a story it was. In Pat's words, Rita's wheelchair-bound sister had died from multiple sclerosis. Her drug-addicted daughter had a son who had died then this daughter had committed suicide by throwing herself from a highway overpass, and this left poor Rita having to adopt and raise her own granddaughter. Of course, it's all correct, according to Rita's you know, reaction there. So afterwards, Pat and her sister, they discussed the event, and they found it really strange that everyone in the VIP section got a reading except them. The sister is the one who purchased the tickets under her name, under her, her name. And she works for the police department. So Pat did a quick Google search of her sister's name. And sure enough, the police department website and her sister's name and photo showed up. 
I'm laughing because I could just see I can just see Thomas John doing a Google search or or a social media search on the sister's name and it's the police. <laughs> so we know that Thomas John has had a prior arrest for taking deposits for apartments he didn't own and skipping out on the money. At least one arrest. I don't know if it's many. But uh, he's had trouble with the law before, let's just say. And I'm not making anything up. Do a Google for Thomas John Flanagan. And you will see that um, Junior, Thomas John Flanagan Jr. has had trouble with the police. He doesn't want to have any more trouble with the police. So um, I don't think he's really interested in, in having uh, a re doing a reading for anybody who works for the police. But, you know, I don't know. I'm overthinking it possibly Pat and her sister are possibly overthinking it. I don't know. So let me quote Pat. Okay. Cause this is what she writes. And I, I quoted this directly in the article I wrote. It saddens me to think of these audience members, the recently widowed elderly man, hoping for contact with his deceased wife, the grief stricken Latino family, whose daughter had died also desperately wanting contact with her deceased loved ones being so manipulated and taking advantage of by Thomas John. So whether or not you believe in karma, divine justice, or atheism, there are human beings, sociopaths, who feel absolutely no guilt about being a predatory parasite on humanity. And as some people would believe, there's a special place in hell for predators like Thomas John. And as I told my sister, that even though Thomas John was a predator, it had been worth $250 to spend an evening with her, her sister. So it's really sad. I mean, it is really sad. But boy, she has some, Pat had some parting shots for him. Um, a predatorial parasite on humanity. Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't want to tingle with Pat either. So anyway, I'm sharing this with you. Here's the book. I have my copy because I received it during Operation Pizza Roll because we went and had our readings done. Of course, he read our Facebook pages back to us and they were not even my Facebook page or Mark's Facebook page. We paid for VIP passes. I think it was $160. And I got a copy of the book, which is what she did. And uh, autographed by Thomas John to Susanna, which is not my name. But Susanna was the person who was Facebook page he read back to me. You can find that all on my website, susangerbeck.org. You can also find it um, in the New York Times. And the whole audio is there and everything. So I kept my copy. Mark has his copy too, also autographed to his character he played. Funny that Thomas John didn't notice that the person he was autographing it to wasn't the person who really was there or anything else he noticed about us but anyway that's the story of what do i do with the damn book i have no idea if pat ever read the article or will see this video um i it was it was really interesting so you guys if you want to get in touch with me you can send me a, a letter a, a paper letter and you can send it to the address that you will see on the letter <laughs> Um, I don't know what to do with the damn book either, but it's on my bookshelf because I paid $165 for that. If you guys like my videos, please like and share. Please leave comments. I really appreciate all the comments I get and I do my best to respond to all of them. Um, my name is Susan, not Karen, by the way. <laughs> I'm having a lot of fun with people calling me Karen and I just say, no, my name is Susan. Oh, I just, come on, you guys, get over it already. Have a great day, and I will see you soon. I hope. <laughs>